Hey everyone, so I thought I'd put together a short video on how to retrofit and wire a car for fuel injection. Now right off the bat, I'll tell you wiring a fuel injected car is probably easier than you think. And that's because the ECU ends up triggering a lot of the relays that give us the functionality I talked about in the first video. Obviously this helps simplify the wiring in the cabin, however there's still some more to it. And to help explain further, I'm going to break down how I rewired my C3 Corvette from scratch for fuel injection. I chose an Edelbrock ProFlow 4 fuel injection kit for the small block Chevy in my C3. And in this kit you basically get everything you need to convert the carbureted engine over to fuel injection. Now Edelbrock isn't the only manufacturer of these kits. Uh, there's Holley Sniper, there's FI Tech, uh, there's a lot of choices out there. But at the end of the day you're going to wear them all nearly the same because they're all going to have an ECU and all those ECUs are going to function in similar ways. So there's really two things that sold me on the Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 setup. And the first of which is an Android interface or an Android tablet uh, to program the ECU via Bluetooth. And the reason I like that is basically when you're not tuning the car with that tablet, uh, you can use it for other things. You can use it for Google Maps or if your kid's riding with you and wants to play a game or something. You have a universal tablet that you can download apps on. The other thing I liked with the Edelbrock system is that it's a true multi-port fuel injection setup, meaning that each cylinder has its own dedicated fuel injector. And that alone makes it superior to a comparable throttle body fuel injection setup. Now I want to add that both Holly and FI Tech, they do offer MFI systems also. You know, Edelbrock isn't the only one out there. And the only reason I didn't look more closely at those systems was basically cost. Is when you price these out for a small block Chevy, it's pretty tough to beat the price you pay for a Pro Flow 4 setup from Edelbrock. Now given all the cool functionality you've been seeing with this tablet, I had to figure out a way to get that thing on the dash without it looking out of place. And to be honest, that was going to be impossible with the original interior pieces. So instead, I just chose to take out that original dash and replace it with some new sheet metal. I also replaced the original gauges with some modern GPS gauges and these have some really cool functionality built into them. So these will calculate a 0 to 60 time or a quarter mile time all based on your GPS location. And you don't need a speedometer cable either because it's using the GPS signal to tell you how fast the car is going. With the dash out of the car it was also a perfect time to go ahead and replace all the old ratty wiring with some new stuff. And that's because this old wiring, it's a fire hazard and it's also undersized to support electric cooling fans, electric fuel pumps, those kind of things that you need with the fuel injected setup. Now when it came to the starter and battery cables, the stuff that came in the car was definitely big enough gauge wise, but it was clad aluminum. And aluminum uh, can carry eddy currents which can interfere with signals and if you're rewiring the car like I was, it was a perfect time to just get that stuff out of there too and replace it with some good copper welding cable. I also dumped the fusible link in favor of a DC breaker, and the reason I did this is not only are these more convenient, but they're resettable. So if you trip this, like you burn out a fusible link, you gotta replace it. If you trip this, you just reset it and move on with life. The most important part of setting up a fuel injection system is being strategic on how you lay out the fuse box or the fuse panel. I say this because by nature, you're gonna have a lot more wearing coming in and out of the fuse box to feed the different sensors and accessories you need for the motor. And if you're not careful, you're going to end up with a rat's nest of wiring similar to what I just pulled out of my car. When it came to fabricating the actual fuse panel, I went as big as I possibly could. And the reason you want to do that is you want to make sure you have plenty of room for the cable management and the different conductors going to your ECU, uh, your relays. You, you want to leave tons of room. The more room, the better. Because as you start to wire, those bundles are going to get bigger and bigger and it's going to get more confusing. So the more space you have, the clearer your wiring is going to be and it's gonna be easier for you to keep track of things too. Now a quick note on Bosch relays. So in the first video I talked a lot about how these relays work and in a fuel injected setup they work exactly the same. The only difference is instead of a toggle switch activating them, uh, the ECU is gonna do that for you. So when I built out my fuse panel here, you know, I built the array of Bosch relays first, I picked the ECU location second, and then I populated the rest of the panel around it. Another improvement I made while rewiring the car was to relocate the fuse box to underneath the center console. And I did that for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is simply access. It's much easier to wire the car and also work on the wiring uh, when it's in a central location and not underneath the dashboard where lighting's bad and you're hitting your head on the steering column, you know, that kind of thing. 
And the second reason I did it is I wanted to have the ECU in a good protected location where I had some more space. And that's because the ECU, that's a very expensive component for a fuel injected setup. And it's also very sensitive. It's like your cell phone. There's uh, transistors in there, there's ICs that are very sensitive. And you don't want to just mount that, you know, on the elements or have it in a location where it's getting hot, uh, that kind of thing. So the last critical thing I'm going to talk about with the fuel injected setup is the fuel system itself. So if you're watching this video, uh, you're likely considering upgrading a carbureted car to fuel injection. And traditionally, carbureted cars ran on anywhere from 4 to 7 PSI of fuel pressure. And if you upgrade to fuel injection, you need significantly more pressure for it to function properly. For instance, the system I installed, this Edelbrock Pro Flow, it needed either 43 or 59 PSI of fuel pressure uh, to run the maps that the ECU was programmed with. Now given the fuel lines on my Corvette were 40 plus years old and had only ever seen 4 to 7 PSI of pressure, I wasn't about to hit them with 59 PSI of fuel pressure. That's just asking for trouble. You know, you get a leak, next thing you know your car's on fire and that's the end of your project. So rather than risk it, much like my wiring, I just replaced the system front to back. New fuel tank, new fuel line, and then obviously an EFI filter and a pump. Uh, so if you have a project car you're converting, definitely consider taking this route too. It's just it's safer, uh, and these parts are cheap. It's like fuel line is not expensive, and it takes a little extra time, but in the end, you'll be happy you did it. All right, so how does it perform? Well, I'm about 500 miles in, and I can honestly say that you have a lot to gain and very little to lose if you go with the Pro Flow 4 setup. You know, I had some concern when I bought this kit, uh, as I've only ever had carbureted uh, engines, and I didn't want to lose the character that you, you have with them. And really, the only difference that I've been able to tell is aesthetically it's a little different with the injectors in plan view. But other than that, you know, the motor still sounds great, but you have the added benefit of good mileage, it starts in the cold, and the power delivery is just far superior on, on a small block Chevy. When it comes to wiring an old car for fuel injection, I hope this video showed you that it really isn't that hard to do, and that you're probably going to spend most of your time updating things like the fuel system and the older wiring rather than installing the kit itself. But if you take the time and you do it right, I guarantee you, you'll be happy with it. Why don't you leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.